start off with squats for your legs. Unusual for Hollywood. Andy here is going to show us some good squat technique. I've never asked you for much, God. Just this once. Let things go well. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I'm the creator of the RPI Hypertrophy app and a professor of exercise and sports science at Lehman College in the Bronx. And today, Chris Pratt is on the menu. Oh, no, wait, I said that a little wrong. In any case, we're gonna see what his training looks like and maybe even what his diet looks like and use our crazy RP expertise to see if he is awesome, meh, or Kim Kardashian. Let's get into it. Hi everybody, I'm Duffy Gaver. Duffy Gaver. Looks really jacked, first observation. Second of all, Duffy is not a real name. What's your real name, sir? Mike, Bob, Jim, Eric. Duffy is a last name, maybe. I'm kidding. It's a fine name, sir. Let's find out what you know. A CrossFit coach and a trainer. CrossFit coach and trainer. That could either be really good or really bad. I wonder. I work a lot for Marvel. Some of the celebrities I've trained include Brad Pitt. Ooh, he's trained Brad Pitt. I've done things with Brad Pitt's picture that you could call training because they're physical. There's a lot of sweating, a lot of huffing and puffing. My forearms are pumped. I have a lot of guilt. Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire, delicious. I'm straight, aren't I? Channing Tatum. Channing, Jesus, all this Dreamboat Express. Duffy, you have a real name, sir. And I am jealous of it. And you. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Oh my lord. This is this, this guy is like. My God. He's just got the dream job. That's what the f am I doing with my life? Sitting in a fing YouTube studio. Damn it! Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson can stay. You feel me? Even though I'm on my gay vibe right now. Black Widow or whatever. Shit, he could be any color you want. Chris Pratt, uh, to name a few. All right, Chris Pratt, finally, the person we were talking about. When I started training Chris for Guardians of the Galaxy, he had just come off a role where he got particularly out of shape. Oh yeah, those Chris Pratt pictures are him out of shape. You know, when I see them and he's like kind of confidently showing it off, I think in his head he's like, I'm a fucking multimillionaire famous person. All of you. Who gives a shit? Could you imagine coming up to Chris Pratt and be like, man, you look like shit. Be like, yes, I'll just buy you out so that you never say that again. Got it? And you're like, uh, okay, I guess you own my life now. His transformation on his effort is huge. He's a dedicated guy. Dedication. And look at those pictures, my God. I think one of the misconceptions about how celebrities train is that it's different than how you would train. I wonder how those misconceptions come to be when f***ing men's health puts up celebrity training videos that are pure nonsense. But when you think about it, a lot of people in the gym actually also train in a purely nonsensical style, so Duffy may be correct on both grounds. I guess it's true to say that just like regular people, some of them train like total shit, and some of them train quite well. Let's find out where Chris Pratt is on that very short spectrum. The fact is, getting in shape has to do with going in and busting your ass in the gym. So I'm going to take you through a quick full body workout so that you can get in shape like Chris and other A-list actors. Duffy's like, I don't like being on camera. Get it out of my face. I'll just say minimally what I have to, and I'm not gonna smile about it either. <laughs> Dope. That was a real squat. Start off with squats for your legs. Unusual for Hollywood. Almost too effective. Too direct. Andy here's gonna show us some good squat techniques. Okay, so he's a CrossFit coach. I'm expecting these to be good squats. I've never asked you for much, God. Just this once. Let things go well. Amen. You want to keep your chest up, get your butt down. F yeah, F yeah, F yeah. Duffy, my man. Keep your back nice and straight. That's about as perfect as they come. F yeah. Ladies, there's no better way to improve your legs or rear. Very important to get your hip up under you and completely open at the top of each rep. Check. F and check. Big green fat check mark. Amazing. Next. So my favorite back exercise for building thickness in my clients is one on dumbbell rows. So Andy's gonna show you Great. how it's done. Duffy tip, use as much weight as you can handle. This is very not Hollywood. This is awesome. 
and the technique is great. Big stretch at the bottom, controlled eccentric on the way to the bottom, touching your ribs at the very top. Oh man. Duffy tip, keep back straight and stick butt out. Again, agreed on all counts. This is just good, old, hardcore, great technique lifting to get jacked. Damn. No wonder Chris Pratt is in amazing shape. His trainer is the man. As a trainer, my job is to be a guide. He said, my job is to be a guide. I thought for a second he said, as a trainer, it's my job to be a guy. I'm like, huh. Oh. Now we're gonna do bicep curls with a bar. Yeah, barbell bicep curls. I love it. Hardcore, awesome, classic movement. Works super well. Amazing. This is great. Probably the single most efficient way to build arms. That guy's arms are pretty big too. So another great exercise is the dumbbell flies. Very old school. Here you got a perfect example of dumbbell flies. Dumbbell fly looks great. She's controlling the eccentric, nice and slow. A little pause at the bottom. Excellent, no critiques. So now we're gonna do some bench press, which is uh, about as good as you get for building chest. Bench press is one of the best exercises for chest growth. Pause. If you don't like it, if it hurts your shoulders or whatever, it's not the only exercise that grows your chest really well. There's tons of others. But if you can get a big pec pump and a big pec stretch and your shoulders and elbows feel okay, barbell benching, barbell benching is amazing. And it built the preponderance of my pec size. Do you guys ever like walk around the mall or something, going out to eat, and you just have to check on your pecs to make sure they're still there? Like, I just, I kind of do that. Like, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. In a bad dream, like a nightmare, I'm like, oh no, and they're gone. I start crying, I wake up crying every other day. All right, folks, if you like that video, you might like the extended edition with all the nasty stuff we can't see on YouTube cut in. The member section is yours for that. Give it some thought and maybe you can join. Uh, it also works the- Look at that, he's touching all the way down. It's as if Duffy actually knows things. Amazing. Hollywood, you should be training with Duffy. If you're not, you should be training with Duffy. Do you have another trainer? Fire them, go to Duffy. Your trainer's pretty good and you love him? Pink slip in his locker, you're fired. Duffy's my man. The front delts, triceps, Andy here's gonna- Wait, wait, what's your trainer's name? It's Duffy now. Show you perfect technique, because that's what he knows. This is excellent technique. You'll notice he's retracting his shoulder blades. He's lifting his chest up. He's slowly controlling the weight for a nice pause right at the actual chest itself for a deep stretch. And then he's returning in an athletic way all the way to full lockout. This is wonderful stuff. These folks are really, really lucky to have Mr. Duffy as a trainer. And it says, Duffy tip, do not bounce bar on chest. Perfect, why no bounce? One is you're needlessly causing traumatic stress to your tissue. And two, the bouncing makes it easier. You want it harder at the bottom, not easier. You wanna use muscular power instead of reflex action. So now we're gonna go over the ab mat sit up. You just wanna bring your back, go down far enough. You don't want your butt to come off the floor and then back up. That's great. The ab mat sit up allows you to get into a great degree of spinal extension. This stretches the abs, puts them in a mechanically disadvantageous, but also very muscle growth promoting position. And then you can curl back in and get the full range of motion. This is an excellent exercise. And for most folks that just wanna get in great shape, this is kind of all you need for abs. This is, this is awesome stuff. There is not a single exercise here yet, which is not a great exercise. These are all great exercises, all taught very, very well. Um, man, if you wanna copy someone's training in Hollywood, Chris Pratt's the man because Mr. Duffy is in his corner. And then down. Oh man, they're holding it at the top too and controlling the eccentric. Music to my ears. That's one version of a full body workout. The important thing is less the workout and more about what you bring to the workout. You have your will, your desire, your discipline again bringing your A game. Dope. Although the workout is important. Mr. Duffy just takes for granted that he knows things and isn't the idiot like most other Hollywood trainers. You want to look like an A-list actor, then you got to show up and you got to train hard. If it was easy, everybody would be in shit. Legit. VH1, thank you for still existing. All right, this is actually Chris Pratt doing the one arm row that I suppose Duffy perfected for him. Not bad. I would like to see a little bit more eccentric control, but otherwise very good. Okay, those are the world's worst pull-ups. Duffy, where are you at? Your boy's f***ing up. No full stretch. No reliable range of motion. Just not a whole lot for 
the back to be doing here. I would like to see assisted pull-ups or pull-downs if Mr. Chris Pratt's not strong enough to do some real actual pull-ups. Actual real pull-ups, the good kind. You stretch all the way down, big stretch at the bottom, let everything loose, and then come all the way up, getting your chin roughly around the bar, even up higher if you want. Oh wow, this is a news clip. Pumping up, Chris Pratt does push-ups at the gas station. Very well. Those are terrible push-ups in a mid-range of motion. I have no idea why he's doing them. Somebody drug test that man, and not for steroids, for psychoactive drugs like mushrooms or acid, maybe even like day three of meth. Sometimes you just gotta get a fucking pump though. It must be really weird being a Hollywood celebrity because like everyone kind of knows you. Like the guy back there is probably like, hey, you're fucking Chris Pratt, aren't you? I hated the fucking Guardians movie. I hate what you did with the script. I'm like, sir, I don't write the script. Hey, shut up, I'm fucking talking to you. Listen, anyway, what you should have done is told that one green girl, you know, this has to be a daily occurrence. In terms of your work with Chris, you mentioned at the beginning of the interview that he was a little on the heavier side when you first met him. First of all, I can hear a f***ing Midlands accent from England any f***ing day of the week. A country, and it. When you started actually training him, um, what were his fitness levels like and how did you go about improving them? When he did zero to 30, I think he dropped down, I think he dropped probably 30 pounds or so. 30 pounds is a lot. For that role. Um, and that's his hard work. You know, we, we cleaned up diet. We got him on the, the intermittent fasting hours. Intermittent fasting works just fine. We have a few videos on how to optimize it if you'd like to click through. Um, it's cool. It's not gonna be ideal from preserving muscle perspective because your body likes to feed relatively often on protein in order to well have protein in its muscles, but not the worst thing in the world. So I did something called intermittent fasting and I ate from like noon to about 6 p.m. That was my window to eat. Noon to 6 p.m. is a curious time when to which to put your feeding window unless you're going to sleep early early. Why? Because typically, you can fall asleep better if your stomach is full of food, especially in a hypocaloric fat loss diet. So if he's going to bed at like normal people time, which is generally like, you know, sort of 11 p.m., it's five hours without eating. That's right when you start to get really hungry. How the f are you supposed to go to sleep? I would prefer the intermittent fasting feeding window to be from something like, you know, gee, four to 10 p.m. or something like that. And what did I eat in that time? What did you eat, Mr. Chris Pratt? Pretty much just healthy, boring stuff. Healthy, boring stuff, some fucking honesty out of Hollywood. I love it. There was a lot of chicken breasts. There was a lot of lean protein, a lot of vegetables. I might have like corn tortillas with some eggs, a lot of avocado, good, clean, healthy fats, tons of coffee, <laughs> black. Lots of coffee. When you're on a big diet, you want the energy, you want the focus, and you want the appetite suppression. Caffeine's great. I'm like a cowboy, you know? I drink my coffee black. Yes, yes, there are many ways to be like a cowboy. One minor one is to drink black coffee. Do uh, cowboys are known for that, I suppose. Since he was playing a SEAL, you know, it, it was very important to what I call being combat shape. Interesting. Let's listen in. You have the, the movie looking, you know, ripped up in shape, but we live as SEALs. We're on the go so much. We're, we don't have a gym everywhere we go. Accurate. You know, a lot of times we only have a set of dumbbells and, and there's times where we don't have that, but you can usually find a place to do pull-ups. You can always find a place to do squats. You can always find a place to do push-ups. you know? And so that's really what we adopted for this training. That's kind of interesting. It, you know, typical special forces operators don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone. Those are more like bodybuilder looks. They actually look like fit and healthy men, and they're often like pretty lean, though sometimes not super lean. They have some muscle, but not a ton of muscle. Their endurance capabilities are really high. They can sprint really fast. They can jump. They can do pull-ups and push-ups and stuff. That they're really, the thing they're paid to do the most is put your sight on target and pull the trigger really fast and then reanalyze the situation and do that over and over again. The fitness is a little bit secondary and they're absolutely not being judged on their physique. So when the movies have like action stars with pop delts and bicep veins, you know, no offense, Batista looking motherfuckers, like that's not what a special forces operator typically looks like. Real operators are typically quite a bit shorter. They usually weigh something like 180 pounds instead of like 240. And they don't look exceptional uh, externally, but when shit gets popping, they're gonna kill you. Did you actually work on his psychology in order to 
make that uh, a replica, essentially, of what a seal would go through. Mm, working on the psychology. Pretend psychology is as an actor, and you can't get hardened up like a seal unless you go actually see live combat after you've successfully passed BUDS training. But let's see what this gentleman has to say. And then, yeah, we, we have those conversations of, you, you know, really like, hey, we don't have to do this. We get to do this. Like, this is something we get to do. That's a really good point. You don't have to do this. You get to do this. Working out is a technically a leisure activity. It is entirely voluntary. And if you're having trouble motivating yourself to work out, understand that it is a privilege. You get to enhance your health and your quality of life and your appearance by doing something that also enhances your psychology and your pain tolerance and makes you happier at the end of it. So don't try to push yourself towards working out. Think of what working out really is, and it'll pull you towards it. You'll want to do it. There is no avoiding hard training if you want to grow. But if you want to grow the most, your training needs to be hard and smart. RP Hypertrophy app will make sure you're progressing on track, monitoring and adjusting your workout at all times. So for all that work you're doing, you can be sure you're getting the best results. When I was a- Oh, f men's health. On Avengers and you had so many superheroes together, they all had private chefs, and I was like, hey, let me get some of that. And so I got into Hemsworth's chef who cooked me kangaroo. What the f that's, that's awesome. Kangaroo doesn't taste that good, by the way. After two days, I mean, look, my arms are half the size of his. I can't believe that I would eat five cheeseburgers for lunch. Oh my God, that's a lot. Holy f he got fat the old fashioned way, just raw overeating. I lived in like a constant state of, oh God, freaking sick of eating so much. And that was happiness at that time. And now it's the exact opposite. It is nice. Eating junk food is very pleasant. And we have to recognize that, that fact. So like, he's like, yeah, I was happy doing that. But now happiness is eating clean and getting lean and stuff. Now eating is boring. But the times between eating, I feel great. Whereas before eating was fun, but the times between, I felt like crap. Yeah, f that. The first transformation of my body to become Star Lord was the hardest because I had the, the furthest to go. I was about two, almost 300 pounds and never- Oh my God, he was almost 300 pounds. Holy shit. That's a tough journey. He said something interesting. The first transformation into Star Lord was the toughest. And then after that, the much easier. The first time you lose a ton of weight or put on a ton of muscle will be the most difficult. And if you ever gain some weight back or lose some muscle, getting back to your previously attained state is way, way easier. So if you've been fit before, but you've kind of slacked recently, don't think it's gonna be as hard to get back your fitness as it was to get it. It's gonna be much easier. So get back in the gym right now and get on it. Uh-oh, cheat meal. Periodically, you gotta treat yourself with a cheat meal. Don't do that. Cheat meals are stupid, and I have a whole lot to say about it on this channel and other videos. If you just search my last name, Isratel, and cheat meal, you'll get uh, at least a few videos saying how it's not a good idea in the context of a fat loss phase. So once your fat loss phase is over and you've achieved your goal, cheat meals galore. But until you've done what you need to do in that phase, eight to 12 weeks long of fat loss dieting with hardcore training, cheating is just gonna set you back and it's gonna make plugging back into the diet harder because you're gonna just wanna cheat more after you get that first little sniff. Bad news. And so for me, it's desserts, man. I go to my mother-in-law's house for Sunday family dinner and I just go crazy on the desserts. And that's everything from me. Yeah, if you go crazy on that stuff, you can gain like a pound of body fat in a day. And if you lose a pound of body fat in a week, you can see how one cheat meal a week even, cheat meal, cheat, go crazy with desserts can really set you back. And I do about seven days worth of damage. Accurate, amazing. And I take about seven days to pay that off and at the end, uh, get right into it. Oh. Seven days of damage. Seven days to get back into the groove and then damage again. <sighs> All right. That was interesting. So on the diet stuff, totally fine. Again, two things. Intermittent fasting is not ideal. If you want to make it more ideal, you move the window up closer to the evening. Maybe have a few protein shakes or protein only snacks through the day. That's even better. So the diet's okay. The training, as far as Chris was demonstrating in some of the videos, not ideal. 
But as far as Duffy has instructed, phenomenal, wonderful Duffy, for now, has our best trainer we've ever had on the Celebrity Hollywood Workout Reviews so far, and that title will remain his until and unless somebody does better. So, on the training, A, 9 out of 10, 4.56 out of 4.98. Make sense of that. See you guys next time.